Welcome to the Safer Essex Roads Partnerships Engagement Workshop to help shape the Partnerships Vision Zero strategy. Thank you all so much for your time. My name is Nicola Foster and I am the Chairman of the Partnership. In the next nine slides, I will tell you which organisations make up the Safer Essex Roads Partnership and define our vision for Essex. I will use a graph to illustrate the trajectory of the number of deaths and serious injuries since 2014 and to quantify our aspiration. International evidence shows that a step change reduction in the severity of collisions can be achieved through implementation of the safe system approach and I will explain this approach in just two slides. There will be time for questions in the breakout sessions. Lastly, I will explain why we think the time to start work towards the aspiration of Vision Zero is now and show where it fits into other objectives and policies of all tiers of local government. The Safe Essex Roads Partnership comprises 11 partner organisations shown here. For those of you who are quick enough to count only 10 logos, we have two branches of National Highways as the partnership covers the geographical areas of Essex, Southend and Thurrock. We will refer to our area as Essex throughout this workshop. We are a single mission organisation. Our purpose is to reduce deaths and serious injuries on Essex roads. Vision Zero is the aspiration for zero road deaths and serious injuries in Essex by 2040. By 2020, the blue bar on the graph, the partnership had achieved a 55% reduction in deaths and serious injuries from the 2005 figure. However, two thirds of that reduction had been achieved by 2010, and these figures aren't even on the graph. So the rate of reduction in the last 10 years has slowed and prompted the search for the most effective way to create another step change reduction Whilst the figure in 2020 is low and therefore most welcome, we used the expected target number for 2020 as the base for our target for 2030, that of a 50% reduction in deaths and serious injuries from 2020. And we used the same baseline for the trajectory to our aspiration of zero deaths and serious injuries on Essex roads by 2040. It is undoubtedly a challenge. Despite good progress, there are still around 50 people dying on Essex roads each year. 50 families transformed, with no warning, in traumatic circumstances. Many more families have to adapt to living with life-changing injuries that may end careers and require high amounts of personal care support. Speed remains a major factor in injury severity and is the reason why a third of all collisions on rural roads result in death or serious injury. Walkers and cycle riders are vulnerable to motorised traffic, particularly at speeds over 20 miles per hour, but riders of motorbikes experience the most death and serious injuries per mile travelled. We all make mistakes, all the time, including whilst driving. Most of the time we get away with it. The safe system approach seeks to ensure that as long as we play our part in the system, that is to comply with traffic laws, we will always get away with it. No road deaths are acceptable. Sadly, the partnership doesn't get advanced warning of exactly where and when each collision will happen, but the causes are always both predictable and preventable. The human body can only cope with a certain amount of force before injuries happen. Vehicles can and do cocoon the human in seat belts, airbags, crumple zones, etc. And the roadside can be kept clear of objects to hit. But this is why speed plays such a major role in deaths and serious injuries. Reduced speeds increase the human body's chances of survival exponentially. The safe system approach removes the blame for mistakes from the road user and whilst it is clear that they maintain a responsibility to comply with traffic laws, responsibility is also attached to road and vehicle designers 
planners, those who maintain the road environment, and those who provide post-collision care. Lastly, but possibly most importantly, the system requires a change in thinking, in culture, in how some organisations deliver services, in priorities, so that together agencies can strengthen all the layers of protection to reduce the risks for all users and drive deaths down to zero. So a safe road system is one that is forgiving of mistakes and should have the following layers of protection. Safe speeds, safe vehicles, safe road users, safe roads and roadsides, and excellent post-collision response and care. The layers need to be considered together and all need to be strengthened to ensure that if one layer fails, another one will compensate to prevent death and serious injuries. Better vehicle construction that is affordable to all and easy to use or mandatory. Improved road infrastructure and lower speeds, for example, have all been shown to reduce the severity of collisions. A collision occurs essentially when two objects try to occupy the same space at the same time. Thankfully, in this country, when a collision that results in serious injury occurs, the emergency services are on hand to pick up the pieces. There have been huge improvements in care over the last few decades, but there is still more that can be done, not least of which may also involve vehicle design. The emergency services need to have an accurate location. Some vehicles will make a call automatically in the event of a collision, but those of us with older cars might use an app, such as What Three Words, but we should all be prepared. Post-collision response is one of our five layers of protection. Another is speed. Inappropriate speed is likely to be a factor in most collisions. This may have been at or below the speed limit, but a slower speed would have given the driver more time and space to observe and anticipate the actions of others or to deal with the hazard. Reduced speeds equals greatly reduced crash energies. Human behaviour is a contributory factor in about 95% of collisions. Whilst many serious injuries and indeed deaths occur as a result of deliberate non-compliance, many are the result of mistakes due to lack of knowledge, experience, awareness, observation, concentration or due to distraction. The safe system seeks to protect the human from very human errors. The type of vehicle and its safety features play a significant role in the severity of any injury received. Motorbike riders, cyclists, pedestrians, horse riders and scooter riders are physically vulnerable and more likely than car drivers to suffer from the speeds and observational errors of others. The last layer of protection to make up the safe system is the road environment. Road design and structure should seek to keep vehicles on the appropriate part of the road, but should seek to provide clear or protected areas at the roadside to allow a vehicle to decelerate safely should it leave the carriageway. The factors interact with each other, which is why all layers of protection should be strengthened to protect the human from a mistake. Why now? I struggle to think that the aspiration to save lives needs justification. But if it does, here goes. The cost of road deaths and serious injuries to the Essex economy in 2019 was £205 million, of which £127 million was incurred by taxpayers. But each event changed the lives of several families forever. Roads free of the risk of injury will have fewer closures and fewer hold-ups. They'll have improved air quality and more reliable journey times. Safe roads create more pleasant surroundings and journeys and may encourage more sustainable travel. But the only question you really need to ask is, how many deaths are okay? Public policies around the environment 
sustainable travel and health are all well served by a shift from motorised to active transport such as walking and cycling. Any system that caters for its most vulnerable users will benefit all. Road death is the biggest killer of our young people. Approximately one third of deaths and serious injuries involve someone driving for work and tourists are more likely to be involved in collisions than local people. The Vision Zero strategy will be reviewed every two to three years, so we'll be able to adapt to changes and future challenges from all policy areas. So in summary, we want zero road deaths and serious injuries by 2040. International evidence suggests that the safe system approach will be required to achieve it, and we seek to implement that so that the people of Essex have the safe roads they deserve. We are asking you to support and contribute. Thank you.